Hi, I'm Rhonda Wepler, an artist in residence at the Museum of Arts and Design here in New York City, and I'm making some art projects on my dining table here. This series of tutorials will show you how to use materials from your kitchen and home to make gifts that fit in a standard size envelope to mail to friends and family. This project was inspired by this 17th century Dutch painting of a dead frog with flies. What has spinners and flies? It's a fly mobile! This is a great decoration to install when you invite friends over for dinner. Here are the materials you'll need for this project. Please pause the video here to get a closer look. You can design a mobile with many flies like this six fly mobile or try this elegant more simple two fly version. Either way, the wire can crumple up and the flies can tuck into a standard sized envelope. First, soak some dry black beans in water overnight. Soak more than you think you will need, as some may split. The beans start small and hard, then swell in the water, and then they'll shrink a bit once dried again. The wire used throughout this project is very thin. First, you will need a wire with a loop on the end for each fly. Cut one and a half inch long pieces of wire. Bend the wire around the tip of the pliers to make a loop. You want the loop to overlap to make a complete circle with no gap. There are two options regarding how to attach each fly to the mobile. My favorite is from the tail, which implies more clearly that the mobile wire is the flight path of the fly. Or attach from the back of the fly like this so that the fly dangles from the mobile. This version is less finicky and more sturdy, but I'll show both ways in this video. Once the beans have soaked overnight, pierce with a toothpick right through the center to lift out of the bowl. To make a tail mounted fly, pierce the bean all the way through with a pin lengthways from top to bottom. Use an eraser underneath as a buffer. Then replace the pin with one of the wire pieces with a loop at the end. The loop should rest all up against the end of the bean. Pierce the center of the bean where the toothpick first was, now with a pin. Push it all the way through. Your bean should look like this. To make a back mounted hanging fly, pierce the fly through the center with a pin where the toothpick first pierced. Again use the eraser as a buffer. This one only needs one hole in it, so leave as is to dry. To make the wings, draw a pointy heart shape on paper. Cut some clear plastic from a food container. Trace the wings using a black permanent marker. Scratch the plastic with a nail to give the wings texture. Mark each wing with a dot about a third of the length from the top of the wing. Now using a finishing nail and hammer, pierce each hole. A plastic cap helps provide a buffer below the plastic. Cut each set of wings out. Cut the black markers off to create a more realistic looking wing. Fold the wing up a little on the same side as the bumpy nail hole edge. After the beans dried for at least three hours, check to see if any have cracked and split like this one and discard. For the tail attached flies, trim the excess wire at the front to leave a little nose. I use silver acrylic paint as a base coat to give the green bottle fly a metallic glow. Insert the pins into an eraser or piece of cork like this coaster to hold to dry. Only paint the top of each bean so that the belly of the fly will appear black. Paint the head of each fly with black acrylic paint. Mix green food coloring with white glue to prepare a glaze. Paint the whole fly with this glaze, including the head and belly. It will eventually dry clear. I used red quinoa for the eyes. Pick out the biggest pieces that you can find. While the glue is still wet, place each eye on the black heads. 
With a toothpick, place extra drops of glue around the eyes to ensure that the eyes won't fall off. Once the glue has dried, I use red nail polish to brighten the eye. Red acrylic paint would also work. A clear top coat of nail polish seals the bean and helps keep the eyes from falling off. To add wings to the tail mounted flies, bend a piece of wire a quarter inch. Now pull the pen out with a pair of pliers. Thread a pair of wings onto the wire and push the wire through the pen hole. Pull the wire tight so that the wings are tight against the back of the fly. Flip the fly over and bend the wire flat against the stomach. Trim the end and leave a small piece of wire to suggest that the fly has legs. For the top mounted flies, make a loop at the end of a one inch piece of wire. Thread this through a pair of wings. Push the end of the wire through the pinhole in the belly of the beam. Flatten the wire against the belly and trim to leave at least a quarter inch wire for legs. Use black acrylic paint to paint the tail loops and the belly wires. To keep the wings from moving around, I use a bit of white glue with a toothpick. I later found that using clear nail polish did this job better and you notice it less. I used an overturned brush to hold the flies while they dried. You can invent your own design for the wire structure. This is a diagram of the six fly design I am showing in this video. The lines in red are thread. You can use all wire, but the mobile won't spin as freely or as much. To make the mobile structure, cut pieces of very thin wire. Lay these out in the general pattern as it gets confusing otherwise. Full loops are only required when a piece of wire connects with another piece of wire. Bend the ends of the wire anywhere the fly will attach. To have a balanced mobile, bend each piece of wire in half and make a loop in the middle by firmly winding around a nail. Holding the wire ends with pliers and twisting the nail will make a tight loop. The mobile will need a hook to hang it from. Twist a piece of wire to form a hook shape and make sure there's a full loop at the end to hang the string from. Small pieces of thread attach the wire pieces together. This allows the mobile to spin 360 degrees. Use a toothpick as a spacer to ensure that the string is loose enough to allow spinning. Use three knots to secure and remove the toothpick. You will need an extra long piece of thread to attach the mo mobile to its hook at the top. This will ensure that the mobile will have a lot of motion. Trim the extra thread ends. Use clear nail polish to keep the knots from untying. To hang flies that are back mounted, simply hook the ends of the mobile wire through the loop on the back of each fly. For the tail mounted flies, you need a stiff connection between the fly and the mobile wire to ensure that the fly flies horizontally and doesn't hang down. First, make a flat hook as shown on the ends of the mobile wire. Hook the fly onto the wire. First, squash the mobile wire hook so it clamps onto the fly tail loop. Now squash the fly tail loop to crimp onto the mobile hook. Test to make sure that the joint is stiff and won't move. Stick the joint permanently stuck with a drop of clear nail polish. After you've attached all of the flies, put extra drops of nail polish on each joint. To mail the mobile, use a piece of card with a notch just cut in it so that the string doesn't tangle. Initially, the tail mounted flies will hang down. Carefully bend the wire so that the fly will fly horizontally. 
but only touch the wire to avoid breaking the fly and wire joint. These flies are going to my collaborative partner, Trevor. We sometimes use flies to represent ourselves in our work, like this sculpture called Double Portrait, and like this hidden fly on the back of this bronze sculpture that we made together. He lives in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Well, thanks for watching. Next time we'll be making pistachio spoons. Stay safe out there.